Yeah, I grew up in those days. Of course, when we would go down the streets in our little town, if a white woman and a man was coming in front of us, we were supposed to step off the sidewalk and let them get by. Uh, separate everything, separate waiting room for black and white. And they had a white and women room and a man room, but there was just one room for us. And it was in the back and was always dirty. Couldn't sit down in the front of a restaurant and eat. Well, my mother died when I was seven months old. My father couldn't read or write. I'm a third grade dropout. Uh, my brother was killed by the policeman when I was a boy. And, and all of those horrible things. When I was being tortured in the Brandon jail, is when I saw the absolute necessity for reconciliation. I saw the depths of racism. What was significant about that in my healing, in the hospital after that, it, it was those white people who I didn't really want around me but I was forced to be there because they were the doctors and the nurses, and they continued to love me. They become the one that washed out my wound, and we began to heal each other. And that's when I said, Lord, I want to preach a gospel that can reconcile black, white, Jews and Gentiles together in one body. If it's a broken relationship, we got to get together, we got to work together, we got to stay together. And, and that's what reconciliation would look like. So it is my privilege to introduce our guest today. He doesn't need much of an introduce, introduction. We saw a lot of his life story on the screen. Help me welcome Dr. John Perkins. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, You, you can never know the deep, deep joy. Joy is the fulfillment of long-time expectation. Yeah. Uh, I remember when Bawa was downtown. Yeah. Uh, I, I could have been one of the, uh, like, the first blood probably to s speak at the church at Open Door. Oh, wow. Uh, and it, uh, so, and I was a part of the renewal that came out of that. I was a part of that Bible church movement after World War II. Yeah. When we began to think of, for the first time, of indigenous international movement. Yeah. And they was coming back here. Yeah. You know, on, and, and so I became a part of that. And it probably the Biola yeah. offspring. Yeah. I, as I said, early on, I was was go to the church to open door to their Sunday evening and that Thursday evening. Uh, or, and so my discipleship, I knew uh, Dr. Bill Bright. And I love it. Bernice Bright. And yeah. her brother was my one of the people that discipled me. Yeah. So the early days, and we watched this place develop. And, you and know. so to be here and then to... It, 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 the beauty of long-term discipleship yeah. that moves to friendship. That's right. And, and so, and it was the quality of their discipling me, not necessarily in reconciliation. We'd done that. That's right. We was doing that. That's right. When they were discipling me. Yeah. We was doing that. But, but in terms of long-term friendship. That's right. Uh, that's the key to real discipleship. I love that. I mean, Biola has a historic tradition, and we have many great people in our past. Well, well, so thank look, you for you sharing me. that. That's you right. and me. You and me. An Asian, a Korean. That's right. And us together. This couldn't have been. No. Back there, when before the, the school moved out here, although they had students. Yeah. Biola was never... Uh, an intentional. That's right. A racial. You know, place. well, I can, can I just say how grateful I am for the road that you have plowed for someone like me to take this kind of position too. Yeah, so thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and actually, this is where we at now. We are now. It's I, I think uh, racial reconciliation is sort of a 
misstate. It's only one human race. Yeah. The human race is, break, is broken. Yeah. And then if there is a new people, it's these that's been born again. That's right. But we're still one human race. Yeah. And that he's reconciling us uh, to him first. That's right. And then to each other yeah. across these barriers. Yeah, tell yeah. us about that. I know that that's why you don't like the word racial reconciliation, and you prefer the word multi-ethnic reconciliation. Yeah. Unpack that for us. Yeah, in, in, in the creation, and on down until you get to the time of Babel, you don't hear nothing about that. Yeah. And that was intentional by God to create this beautiful ethnicity. And that was going to be the sign of him bringing incarnation at Pentecost and, and bringing about a new people. If anyone be in Christ, they're a new creation. Yeah. The old is gone. God is in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Yeah. And, 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 and one reconcile that one broken human ethnicity. That's right. We're all split. Right. Split. And now he's reconciling. That's, that's the church in Revelation. That's, right. that's when we started finishing. <laughs> We're coming. Who are these? These are they from every ethnic language, tongue. That's what in Pentecost was. That was the sign of our mission. That's right. That's what he sent us on. That's right. And so, and it's been the church now that's been maintaining this. That's right. In Mississippi and all over the world, you've got to get people religious straight. Yeah. Religion over doctrinizes people too quick yeah. before they get to the truth. Right. They make a doctrine out of it. That's right. You know, yeah. the truth is that we're one people. Yeah. We're one blood. Yeah. I love that. And that is the, that is the name of your book, right? Yes. One blood. Okay. So now here's the thing. I love it. You know, we got to plug the book, right? There you go. Okay. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's pretty clear. That's what the Holy Spirit did. He came upon the church. He spoke so that other people can understand the gospel. That's what the church is doing. That's what the church is called to. How come this movement of multi-ethnic re reconciliation is not taking shape in America. Yeah. Well, well we're wrong-headed. I don't think he intended to make a lie the truth. I think he int intended us to confess our sin. A lie is sin. Mm. And so you, so, so he created the churches. This is the church's mission. Yeah. Now, these were his last words. That we might be one. Yeah. That, that's the outcome of our mission. That's right. We're coming to close to it. That's right. And the, the church is, is getting a little bit more wrong-headed. That's right. Wrong, Unfortunately, wrong right? Yeah. In, I mean, in our society. So reconciliation, the way we're going, is a misnomer. Yeah. And, and, and it's not working. Mm. You're right. And so I think we got to become intentional. Yeah. I think that's what obedient to the Word of God is. Yeah. See, the Word of God is the power of God. Of course, yeah. the Word of God initiates the Spirit of God and the uh, Father, Son of God, and yeah. all of that together yeah. uh, uh, in, in life. And so he wants us to show that. By this may all people know that you are truly my disciple. Yeah. You have been discipled. Yeah, I love that. I, you... By I love one for another. Love is the finishing. It's the beginning. It's the end. Yeah. And, and why wouldn't he want us to be one when he made us one? That's right. Well, tell me what's wrong with that. I mean, it makes so much sense to me. Yes. But there are so many things that stop us, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. 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 So we got to try and make sense to this for the church. That's the question you asked. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely not a head thing. It's kind of a yeah. heart thing. It's, be a, it's a discipleship thing. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So then how, uh, explain, uh, help us get a glimpse of some of the things that you've seen in your life. Help us see some of the injustices that you've faced. I, at, at FAM, was really emotional even to me uh, yeah. then to live through that. I think, though, as I became a Christian and as I was conscious of living, the, the one thing, that, the one little thing that I'm still trying to figure out how it happened with my third grade or so education, and uh, I never felt inferior. Mm. I never felt like I was a nigger, whatever that was. Wow. 
I think that saved me. Mm. I don't think I had to be converted. Mm. Uh, I, and I, and I, in something in the environment, it might have been the fact that my mother died when I was seven months old. Mm. It might be all the way I lived, or grew up on a plantation yeah. and growing up on a plantation and there were white kids on the plantation. I said, like, you be together when you're together. Mm. But then as you get out on there, uh, they, it begins to separate and the kids learn the separation. Mm. But when you be with somebody when you're young and grow up, and you can do something as well as they can. Yeah. We couldn't do much but play, but we could play together and we enjoy that. That's right. And we didn't see that difference. So I I wasn't and what see what is how racism is causing two people to believe something that's a lie. Yeah. It's called white folk to believe they're superior. Mm. It calls black folks to believe that they're inferior. And yeah. once you do that, you got them. Mm. People are what they believe. Yeah. And that's why he says that you got to believe in him. Yeah, I love you got to believe in him. Yeah, there's one God, and there's one mediator between God and man. Yeah, and that man is Christ. We got to believe right. We, we we are off balance in our belief. Yeah, in fact, the gospel is almost too simple. If you hear the early that. day, I love that. The people ask that question very strong. What must I do to be saved? In the jail, the jailer, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's, that's right. What, what must I? Very simple. And I think we don't complicate it with our, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride. Now, that's what makes sin. Yeah. Sin is, and sin starts with us. Right now, we, we're making sin somebody else. Mm. Is that other race going to get me? That's right. That other ethnic is going to get me. He's going to make bigger bonds than I want to make. Yeah. You, you know, uh, it's, it's, yeah. So we got to believe right. Yeah. That, Evangelists lost some of that. They, they thought that you just believe without action. Believing is obedient. I love it. I love it. How, how, where did it come, where did it click for you that Jesus is the center, that he is my identity, and it allowed you to live out your identity in Christ? I, I think it, I think it was that, that poverty, my mother's death, I come to Christ when I'm 27, up in the valley, Pasadena, Monrovia, in that era. Yeah. I came at a good time. Yeah. And in a good movement uh, uh, there. Uh, I, I think it's those relationships, I, I think that that shaped my discipleship. Mm. You know, I, I didn't ever believe that, that these guys who were discipling me were superior to me. Mm hmm you, you know, and that's what happens when you get to know each other. I think Henry Ford had it right. Yeah. Coming together is the beginning. Yeah. Working together is progress. Staying together is success. Mm. And, so I, and, and this is the church's mission. Yeah. Our job is to disciple people for this mission. Yeah. So they might know this one and true living God. Yeah. And they might make him known. And then, of course, to know that you're not God. He's so big. I, mean, I think that's what gets us too. We make God too little. Mm. We make him our buddy. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We, do. we make him our co-pilot. That's right. That's right. Take the wheel. So right? I can handle yeah. the ship. I can, just in case I go to sleep. Yeah. But that's heathenism. He needs us slumbers in our sleep. Mm. He is with us. God is. I'm writing this new book. You know, they say, I thought this was the last one. No, I got this another says party one. Word. Another one. All right. I got, okay. I got one that's coming that will clarify this one. All right. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 look, look, yeah, yeah. I love that. Well, you know what? Let, let's take it. Let's take a break. I know you have a lot of wisdom to share with us. Okay. I love what you said that uh, reconciliation is a discipleship process. That's so, right. so we're going to process that a little bit. We're going to invite our team to lead us in a reflection song, and we're going to invite you guys to text in questions, and we'll get to them after our song. All right, Dr. Perkins, we are going to get, oh, let's shake hands again. I love yeah, that. So we're going right. to get to a few questions, all right? Here okay. we go. Let's do okay. this, okay? What advice do you have for ethnic minority students in a predominantly white university setting? One more time. What advice do you have for ethnic minority students in a predominantly white university setting? I think I, I think the answer is I don't want to make it over simple. Uh, 
is to begin receiving each other, desiring to know each other. Yeah. And know is sort of like one of the strongest words in the Bible. Yeah. To know. To know is to have life at its fullness. Mm. To know is Adam and Eve knew each other and they gave birth to the human race. Yeah. And, and, and so to know, and, and, and I think he created us to, to, to be friends. That's right. When Abraham found the Almighty God in Romans 4, Paul, in his manifesto, he asked this wonderful question that you asked him. What did our father Abraham found when he found God? Mm. He found a friend. Mm. That's right. What do John say in John, 1 John, when he repeats what he said in the gospel? Yeah. He says, that's what you have seen. That's what we come to know him. Yeah. He hooks us up as friends. Then he said, if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, yeah. we have friendship, fellowship, one with another. Yeah. And uh, we got to desire that like that song. Mm. Like a deer painted us at the water brook. We ought to desire this love. Yeah. When we get God, we got love. Yeah. It's, he so loved us that he made the sacrifice. Yeah. Why shouldn't he want justice to fall down? That's right. That's he right. don't want to harm each other. Yeah. He loves us. That's right. He I, loves us. That's I, the message from him. So the message itself is the message of reconciliation. It's not a byword. It's not something we discover. It's the action word that's right. that brings us together. I love God it. God is in Christ. He was in Christ in the incarnation. And he's in us, bringing us together so that we can be reconciled. And he says to us, don't use that grace in vain. Mm. That means it's saying that a lot of us are living with that doubt. We got the grace yeah. that can pull that off. Yeah. Grace is bigger than our sin. Yeah. And if we don't do this relationship as a church, the church is here to disciple us yeah. to do that. Yeah. You, you know, it's that was call our people had been called out of the world to go back in the world uh, to reach the world with this love of God. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's go to another question. Okay. In the pursuit of being one, is there room for different peoples to be distinct culturally? Oh, I don't. So we're all called to be one, but can we be distinct culturally? I, I think we, if we do that, we are, I think we can. Because yeah. God can do that. I think that was the idea. Probably it was in the hand. It's part it of the Trinity. It was in the hand. Mm -hmm. And you so, and that's our job is to try to translate it in a way of love that people can hear that. Okay. So I, but I don't think we need to deify. See, that's the idea. Uh, we have to, we, we start deifying our culture. Yeah. And, and, and culture is not just what we call racia. It's class. That's right. It's culture. That's right. And in England, you got to speak the right England. Don't, uh, English don't, they don't like you. In Boston, they speak another different <laughs> one. You, you, you know, in the South, we speak us on another one. That's right. Yeah. But boy, he wants us to overcome that. Okay. He wants us to find ways. And I think we got to, the little children got the song. The more we get together, together, together. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. For your friend is my friend, and my friend. Oh, I, I, it's a mandate. Mm. It's a commandment. That's right. That's it, right. It, I, and then I think we think we got option and to be Christian. Right. No, it's just part of being a Christian, right? To love each other well. That's right. Okay. That's right. Love one another, for love is of God. He that loves is born of God and knoweth God. No. He that loves not knoweth not God. I mean, that's double talk. He wants us <laughs> to hear that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Here's another question, okay? What personal spiritual practices or disciplines 
have been helpful to you in your journey of reconciliation? What do you recommend for others? So what disciplines have been helpful for you, and what might be disciplines that might help other people? I, I think you, we got to read the Bible a little more careful. Okay, okay, okay. And we got to read the Bible with the desire to do it. Oh, whoa, whoa. So to be, whoa. You, so to be you doers of the word and not hearers only, and if you keep doing that, you will deceive yourself. That's right. You would think that hearing it as well as doing it. He, he's telling you about it so you can uh, do his will. Mm. You hear it so you can do his will. The will of God is it. Yeah. And there are things that God has commanded us to do within it. Well, and one of those is love one another. Mm. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. All right, here's another question. As a black student who has experienced pain at the hand of some of my white peers, I'm wondering how did you learn to love and have compassion on white people? Yeah. Well, I said in that little film there, and it, well, when I was beaten at Brandon Jail, tortured by those white people, I didn't want to see no more. Mm. But then I ended up going to the hospital, had to go to the hospital. Mm. So my doctors there, they would come. One young doctor would come after he would spend the day working. He would come white and sit by my bed at night and just try to go to sleep. Another doctor came and took me in his car and took me out, took all these tubes out of me, took me out for a ride. Uh, and it's, I think it's, love is given. Yeah. You don't wait to receive it. Mm. You give love. Mm. And I think that's the church's responsibility mm. for us to create that environment of love. And that's more than just one thing. Yeah. Now, that's, you know, it's not just one little piece. It's you got to create an environment of love because we are captured to our environment. Yeah. We're captured to our culture. Yeah. You know, and now we can live with that hate. But, I, but our environment then, uh, and our activities, practice, then pulls us away from that. Yeah. And, and that's what fellowship is called in the Bible. Yeah. It's in the worship together. Yeah. It is being together. And, and, and probably one of the most creative places to build that fellowship is when we eat together. That's why he memorialized that supper. Because it. all of your senses are open. That's right. You smell it. That's right. You taste it. That's right. You, all of the senses, you feel it. That's right. You touch. All of our senses are open. So he memorialized it. I think, so we got to read our Bible. Mm. And then we got to recognize that the, the fruit, what the spirit produces, itself is versified. Mm. Love. Joy, perseverance, patience. You, you know so it's really a devotional life. Yeah. It's really Psalms 1. Hmm. Living a, a life of meditating upon the Lord. Yeah. Day and night. The Lord's prayer was meant to be a daily Lord prayer. That's right. It was, it was a pattern prayer for when we pray all the time, you, you know, in our life. So I think it's. How do we practice it? How do we practice it? it it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. Yeah. But in the midst of that challenge, you're looking for joy. Mm. In the midst of that challenge, you're looking for joy. And I think pain makes joy more glad for, more hopeful, mm. more thanksgiving for. That's right. And, I, and I, I think we make a mistake when we go, just go for help, wealth, and that stuff. Mm. Because then you think then that money is just a solution to your problem. That's right. You get the idea, but, but, but we need each other. Yeah. We need that friendship. I love it. We need the doctor. We need the nurse. We need the teachers. We need those people in our lives. All right. Thank you for that. Here's another question. Okay, how do you stay in this work of empowerment and justice for so long without burning out? 
There's a I, lot of fatigue in this world. That's a, that's a, that's a good one. Because I lived so long believing that I couldn't burn out. Mm. <laughs> you know, and then as I, uh, I think, got old, began to rely too much on what I already knew. Mm. And then I think I began to burn out. Mm. So I, I think we got to stay with each other. Mm. We got to be in a discipleship relationship. Yeah. We got to be in a family relationship. Yeah. Uh, we got to be in a Bible study group uh, of, of five or six people, yeah. or three or four people, you, you know. Yeah. And, 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 yeah, I, I think that getting together, yeah. that's the idea of the church, is a fellowship, it's yeah. fellowship, yeah. All right, here's another question. What does long-term reconciling discipleship look like with reference to the reform of unjust systems? One more time. What does long-term reconciling discipleship look like with reference to reform of unjust systems? I found out that you can do better, and I was strengthened. I sort of like when they say I came in and out of men a civil rights movement. Yeah. Because at one point, we dedicated ourselves. We thought that we was going to win the civil rights movement, and we thought we were going to do that in four or five years. Wow. I look back and see that those are the people who taught me commitment. Mm. We have to put our life at risk. Mm. The church don't put its life... It's, Go happy. It's everything is yang yang. <laughs> Pain is redemptive. Mm, wow. Pain wow. develop out of passion. And and, and 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 passion is others' pain, not my own. Yeah. I enter into their pain. Jesus when he said passion, whoever it was, if it was uh, blind Barnabas, if it's the woman touched him in the crowd, it says passion went out of me. Mm. I think our life today is live a little bit too individualistic. Mm. And I think that we are getting, and I think it's Come addiction. Yeah. I think it's addiction. I, I don't think we're going to solve the drug problem like we're talking about, mm -hmm. the drug epidemic. Right. It's an addiction. It's, it's an individual. And I got to have it. I'm going to steal brick in your house. I got to have it. I got to have it. Oh, Lord, God, tell us don't live alone. Be conscious he's with us. Mm. I, I think it's, folks, it's authentic Christianity. We got to go back to our Bible. That's sort of of a living book. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It's, and yeah. it's, 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 it's. Most life principle is not one thing. All right. It's, it's at least three. <laughs> uh, uh, faith, hope, and love. There we go. Okay. And, and, and I think life is like that. It's somewhat a, a trinity. It's more than that, too, you know, around issues. But I'm, I'm saying it's, it's not the... It's not this totally individual. Where are you coming from and where are you going? The idea is that you don't, shouldn't be alone. It's not good that human would be alone. We, we're going to get addicted to ourselves. That's right, that's and right. We're going to become lonely. Lonely, loneliness is something. And I think it has something to do with suicide. I yeah. haven't got there yet. I'm still thinking about That's it. That's the second book after this one? Yeah, that okay. might be the next right. one. <laughs> okay. All right, here's another question. Thank you so much for your love for the Lord, sir. You said that we need to be first reconciled to Christ and then to each other. I love this. Could you share which biblical principles motivated a civil rights activist like yourself? I... Well, what biblical principles helped uh, shape you as a civil rights activist? I, I, I think it's our need for each other. Mm. I think that we, we are, and that's biblical. Uh, three card string is hard to break. Yeah. And so we need, and then 
a wife, uh, a family. Yeah. I used to tell young people when they think they get engaged, I said, yeah, y'all be together alone by yourself. I said, but as soon as y'all get married, go back to your group. Go back to your group. Mm. You need that group to know you. That's right. To help you. That's right. Those weddings don't last long when they're just all me and him. Yeah. The child, the child comes along, that takes a little attention off of each other. Right. And put them on a child. And mm -hmm. so I, th I think it's the authentic church. That's what I'm looking at. And I'm looking at how we use now, and some churches are thinking about it. I think we are facing up. But, oh, we got the gospel in that facing up. Yeah. And, and there are some churches I'm working with now. It's talking about how to develop church through this technology mm -hmm. and developing our own amp that brings people together and, and three or four together and then on, and that becomes a church. And then they, it becomes the development of a church, you know, and then it grows. Yeah. In that. Because you need, not just you need the technology, yeah. but the technology is the initiative to bring it together. That's right. And then the technology can still feed you, but you also need to feed you in collective groups. That's right. So you can stay together. All right. Hey, you know, Dr. Perkins, I know you have a lot to share with us. Help me thank Dr. Perkins for sharing with us today. Discover who you're called to be at Biola University, a leading Christ-centered university in Los Angeles, with programs on campus and online. Subscribe for more of our videos and learn more at biola.edu.